My name is Deepal Sarkama. I was born and raised in India, in the southern part of India, in a state called Kerala. I moved to the United States in the year of 1999. You know when you are so young, it's never fun to move across the globe to a country where you have no friends, no family, no relatives, and no family of people. I settled down in a city called Valencia in Southern California. On my very first day at work, just like some of us do, I was looking around to see people who are similar to me. The people <coughs> who looked like me, had a skin tone like me, People who talk like me, had an accent like me. Good or bad, I didn't see anyone. But that did not disappoint me. Everyone out there were very welcoming. They smiled at me, they showed me my desk. There was welcome banners and balloons all over the place. I felt very comfortable. They took me out for coffee, invited me for lunch. We had many happy hours. It was just awesome. I loved my workplace. It was two weeks into my job. One day I was returning from work and walking to the parking lot. And as I'm walking, I see my car over there. My new car. The very first car that I'm paying for. My glossy blue car. <laughs> and as I walk towards my car, I stood there in a state of shock. My car was keyed back and forth, back and forth a dozen times. I was sad, I was angry, I was frustrated, but I didn't know what to do next. I stood there looking around to see if there was anyone around my car. And I didn't see anyone. And as I stood there, I saw a man further away in the parking lot. So I thought I'd go up to him and ask him if he had seen anyone close to my car. So I walked up to him. And as I reached closer to him, I said, excuse me, my car is parked over there. It has been keyed. Have you seen anyone close to my car? And his voice was very stern. He said no. And he looked away from me. And his facial expression told me that he did not want to continue that conversation further. So I said thank you. And I'm walking away. I took a few steps away from him. I thought I heard something. But I was not sure if I heard that. So I turned my head. I looked at him and I said excuse me. And he looks right at my face. And he said, get out of my country. This, for me, was more painful than my car being key. It was very, very painful. I started to cry. And as I start to cry, I'm asking him the question. Why do you say that to me? What did I do to you? I don't know you. You don't know me? Why would you say that to me? And I kept on crying and I kept on asking this question over and over again. And at this time, I am making a big scene in the parking lot. People are walking by, giving me stares. Oh, there's this crazy girl out there. There was this lady who walked up to me and she said, Hey, sweetie, is there something that I can help you with? And I ran up to her. And I talked about my car, which was keyed over there. And the man over here was telling me to get out of his country. I'm pouring my heart out. And she said, calm down. Don't worry. We'll take care of it. And I stand there. She, like a badass woman, stands up for me. She tells the man to apologize and the man says, 
this is none of your business. You stay out of this. And she says, this is my business. They go back and forth as I sit there crying. And finally the man said sorry to me. And when he was saying this, the lady asked the man, did you key her car? And the man said, yes, I did. I am now crying at the top of my voice. So you keep my car too? <laughs> the lady asked me to calm down. Don't worry. Take care of it. And she told the man to fix my car. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And she said, yes, you're going to do it. And she grabbed some phone and said, I am going to call 911. The me crying over there has no clue what a 911 call is. <laughs> no clue whatsoever. As she starts to dial the number, the man mellows down and he agrees to fix the car. The lady, her name is Stacy. She gets her contact information, the driver's license number, the insurance details, all of the information, phone number, address, everything, and allows us to exchange that information. The man's name is David. That day, when I left that parking lot, I walked up to Stacy and I hugged her. I hugged her so tight that I almost suffocated her. <laughs> I have never ever hugged anyone so tight in my life. Never ever. A few days after this incident, I get a phone call. And that was Stacy. She said if we could meet for a coffee. And I'm like, yes, I want to meet you. And I drive over. I grab some thank you flowers and I go there. But then... I was disappointed. I see David next to Stacy, and David is someone I don't want to see ever again. I'm frustrated. But for courtesy's sake, I decided to go in. Three of us sat together. Stacy introduced herself. She makes us all warm up. She talked about how her life was. I talked about myself coming all the way from India. All the struggles that I'm going through. Not able to find a place to live because I do not have a rental history. I can't get a credit card because I don't have a credit history. I can't buy a car because I don't have a driving history. We talked about all of it. David talked about himself. That day when I left that coffee shop, all my anger, all my grudge, all my frustration, everything just disappeared. I did not know that David worked in my office. I did not know that I was the only Indian in the office. Little did I know that David's job was getting eliminated because his job position was getting transitioned to India. David's wife had lost her job six months prior to this incident because her whole department work was getting transitioned to India. David talked about his family with the four little kids, the stacking bills, the financial crisis, all of it. And what that meeting turned into was the start of a beautiful relationship. Three best friends, Stacy, David, and I. Belongingness for me doesn't come from a country of origin. It has nothing to do with your skin color. It has nothing to do with how you speak. None of it. For me, belongingness is empathy. It is how you care for your fellow humans. And who taught me that? Who showed me that? 
it was space. It's been 20 years since this incident has happened. I've had so many Stacy's go through my life, so many of them. And I thank all of them as I stand here today, I thank all of them. Without them, I would never be the way I am today. And I wouldn't be standing here today without them. It's been 17 years since I moved out of California and moved to the Twin Cities. David, Stacy, and I are still in touch. We call each other, we text each other, we meet each other, and we meet whenever possible. I'll end my story with a small note. Last spring break, I went to California with my family. David, Stacy, and I decided to meet. David invited us for dinner at his house. And I drove over there and parked my car into the parking Sorry, driving. David was right there, big smile on his face, welcoming us into his house. And as I went up to him, smiled at him, and looked back at my car in the driveway, and I said, please don't see that. <laughs>